One day, Waraki Itsu outside the town to training her ice powers. She had been training a lot lately. But when she was, she was training, she heard is a big crash. And she had no idea what this crash could have been. She looked around in the area to see where this explosion or disaster or whatever could happen. She saw a big pile of smoke in the distance. Even she didn't want to be even go any near that. But her curiosity made her and draw her to this place. And when she arrived, she saw this purple robot in, the, in a hole in the ground. She has never seen anything like it. She has, she has seen robots, but not as this. And particularly, this robot was almost nearly three times of her size, and which was normally not normal for robots. She slowly walked up to this robot, and suddenly it started to move, and it's head turned and saw her and directly pointed what well, this looks seems to be some sort of weapon against her but she used her eyes powers to somehow block cover the weapon by her eyes and this robot just stared at her and stood up and it towered over her three times of her own size he said who are you and what are you doing here? And where am I? And he has no answer. Because Akitsu, she was silent. She was known to be silent for most part. She decided not to even answer him. I demand an answer. Where are... Where am I? And who are you? But she was still silent. She just looked at him, and he gets started getting even more furious, and then he's pointing his weapon against her, and as he tried to blast, causes an explosion, and Akitsu, she jumped backwards quickly to avoid any other damage, and the robot just looked at her. My name is Akitsu. And I'm a Sekirei. And who are you? A Sekirei? You're near a human being. No. I'm an alien. Who are you? My name is Shockway. I am Decepticon from the planet Cybertron. Under command of Megatron. Now, tell me, where am I? You are in Japan. Japan? How did I end up up here? I have no idea. I just heard this big explosion and I found you here. That's it. Well, tell me, where is the other Decepticons? I have no idea. I never seen any some called Decepticons or what do you call them. And if you were trying to get that, you would not get much answer from me. And then she started walking around, and turned around, and walked away. You will stay. But he, she didn't listen. She continued walking. He screamed once again. You will stay. And he shoots at the tree nearby her. But that didn't stop her. She continued walking. As he tried to walk after her, he suddenly collapsed to the ground. Apparently, this transport, what has been happened to him, somehow drained most of his energy. And using of his weapon only drained it even more. She turned around and saw that he was almost fainting because of lack of less of power. She tried to defend her only if he tried to fire again. He tried, 
but the weapon didn't even fire because of lack of power. Continued re repeating the firing weapon, but only to deplete his own power. Do you need any help? She asked. Not from you. Leave me alone. All I need is more power. But that didn't stop her. She actually somehow convinced him. If you need more power, follow me. But don't try to fire, right? And he didn't promise, but he said, All right. But no tricks. Or I will fire. Deal. But the rest of the way into town, Akitsu, she didn't speak much, or even speak at all, but Shokwe, he was silent. He didn't speak at all. In fact, he was only watching her and the area, looking around, and even scanning for even some sort of frequencies of if it was any Decepticons in the area, or at least in space. But after they came to this some abandoned industrial, industrial location, like a warehouse or something, there she managed to get him some power and he started feeding off from it. She just sat down on a, on a box and just looked at him, curiously not understand, trying to try, try to figure out who he is and where he's from. Even though that he mentioned Cybertron, but she had never heard about that place, she asked him, What is Cybertron? What do you want to know? Are you an Autobot ally? Autobot? What is that? Never heard of it. So he didn't even know. But after Kun when he tried to figure out what has happened, and after figure out he realized he was on Earth, but not the same Earth as he knew about. After he realized he had must have been traveled to some sort of parallel universe by this portal. And that means he has no way back home to his own dimension. Meaning that he is stuck on this Earth without any backup, or any way of contact Megatron or the other Decepticons. He has no idea what to do then, but now he has access to more power, but he would not be able to conquer this planet or this universe by himself. He wanted to try to do something. After he told her told Akitsu to leave this building and leave him alone. And she just stood up, didn't say much or anything at all, and just left. But before she left, she said, I will be back. And she slept. And for that night, Shockwave, he tried to figure out a way, to, if there was any possible way to build or try some Re reverse engineer any sort of earth technology to try to open this portal. Even if it did manage to open, there was just one problem. There was no 100% guarantee he would end up in his own dimension. In fact, he could end up in another dimension again and again. So he decided not to even do that. But the next day, Shockwave heard the door open as he was about to fire his weapon. He heard a voice and it was Akitsu. He was surprised at the act that she really did came back. So, how are you feeling today? Any power up? But he didn't speak much. He said, Yes, I am. So, why do, did you even come back here in the first place? Well, this is my training place. Training place? 
Yes. And then he, then Akitsu showed him some of his, her ice powers, and he was really amazed for some reason. I have no idea that humans have powers like his. I told you, I am a Sekere, not a human being. I am an alien. Normal human beings doesn't even have the powers as I do. Are there more of you here? Several. Different powers, but not as, as I do. And she just sat down and was quiet. It was like they stared at each other for eternity. It felt like hours, but in fact it was like 5-10 minutes when suddenly Shockwave asked her. So, so you are saying no one in this world has ever heard about Decepticons or Autobots or Cybertron? No. Huh. That means I'm really stuck here then. Stuck? She asked. Never mind. You can explain to me. I haven't even. I'm not gonna tell anyone. <sighs> Alright. But don't ever try to attack me, alright? Promise. And then he explained some more about the Death Decepticons' battles against Autobots. And that he was trying to use in some sort of a, some sort of space bridge portal between Cybertron to Earth, but at some point during his transport, something went wrong, and he ended up here, on this Earth. Even for most of his part. Then he asked her about Sekere, where they are, and how does it turned out to end up living on this planet. Are aliens living among humans, he had asked her. But she said she only is aware about her kind is about around a hundred of her people on the planet. And they came to Earth about a few decades ago. And then she wonders, what will he do now that he has no way back to his own dimension? And for that, it surprised him. For that, he had no answer. He really didn't know what to do. She asked him, If you could do good things, like a good guy, would you even to consider to do that? Like, I'd be a, a hero? <laughs> that is just weakness for even for me. Weakness? No. That is not a weakness. It's a great power. People who are doing good, good things, good deeds, are always being treated well. Huh, sure, right, Dad. He tried to convince her being a bad guy was even much better to be as a good guy. They ever did this sort of argument about this, and then during this argument, she Gets so angry that so she just left without saying another word. And she, in fact, didn't return within the next three days. And during that time, Shockwave had managed to get access to some sort of to the internet where he was able to learn more about this Sekere and more about the human culture. And even more about one subject good guys, heroes. And he actually started to not somehow starting to feeling like something in his program to be a bad guy was wrong. But after three days, when Asiku Akitsu came back to the warehouse, she found Shockwave gone. There was no message, nothing. She waited for him to return. She should sit there and waited for nearly at least about four or five hours before he even returned back. And when he came back, he was holding something. And she saw it's a small bag or some sort of something that contained food. Here, it's for you. And he gave it to her. 
he he was really surprised that a bad guy somehow wanted to give her a gift. Why does it change, change the nature now? She asked. I have been studying your this world's culture by this interweb internet. Yeah, that's good things to say. Yeah, I have been studying it a lot. It talks even subject. Good guys, heroes. I understand what you mean. And I know I understand that why I, I many other bad guys. But then he then he told her. Megatron. He used to be a good guy, but when he get hunger for more power and became the leader of the Septicons. She told him he can do the same. Turn from a good guy, from a bad guy into a good guy. Even after all this happened, and he struggled to be a good guy, he tried to convince her that was not possible. But he tried to do some good things for animals in the area, and for some reason, that in his mechanical heart or in his feelings, said felt that good. And even after all this, they start meeting more and more in this warehouse, which he had made as his home. They even train together in the, in the forest or in the warehouse against each other, most of friendly sparring or something. But after about this, I've been doing this for about two weeks, there was this big explosion in town. Apparently, a skyscraper was on fire, or this, there was uh, some sort of big, there was not like a, there were like a tall a skyscraper, but it was just an ordinary apartment building, and there was on fire. Akitsu was there to try to break out this on the fire, but it didn't work out, because she couldn't handle it all herself. Shockwave, turned out, showed up un unannounced, and people were scared. Because they thought he was going to destroy the building. But instead, he used his power and his, his scale and saved tons of people who trapped inside the fire. And after that, people were just still scared. But Akitsu, who was one of the local heroes, actually said, put in a good word for Shockwave. He's a good guy, he's a hero. After that, even that he has saved like 20 people from the fire, and those survivors faint him. And they even wish that he could be in staying in town, which he did. After all of this, Akitsu had actually started falling for him. But she had no idea that his feelings towards him was going to, would be responded back. But, she even even knew, if the public even would find out that she was had fallen in love with this robot, she had no idea how they would react. They probably would say, how could you be in a fall in love with a robot? You're an alien. But she would say, he's an alien too. Yes, but he's a robot, not a living being. That was not going to work out. But, but that never happened. Because... Somehow this came out to the public saying that they were dating. In fact, public didn't react to any badly. Of course, there were some questions about how this could how they would even work out. But Shockwave did confirm it it was going to work out. Because even there are two different living beings, like he is an he is a mechanical machine life form and she is an alien of living life form. Despite these two different differences they had, but they still cared about each other and Shockwave. In fact, he had become such a big hero in the town as soon and even an international hero. His name has spread across the globe and people around the world, like reporters, journalists, had interviewed him. They talked to him, asked him about his past, about his home planet, what it's, what it's like, and sort of things. And for that, 
they were even asked him one question. What do you think about Akitsu? And he said, Akitsu, she is the most amazing secretary that it is. I love her, and she loves me, and I will do anything to protect her. And then I mean anything, except making any other harms. And for that moment, I think Akitsu cannot have any more happier to be with Shockwave. Even despite she had the words that he would go back to his bad guy living again. Of course, there were some struggles for Shockwave at first, but after get used to being a good guy, he didn't have any more struggles again to be a, a bad guy anymore. And of course, even after again some more respect for the people around the world, and especially Japan and around the world, he felt home. He felt Earth. This Earth was his new home. Even despite he was never going to be able to see Cybertron ever again. But that didn't stop him though. And in fact, he heard that one American and one Japanese big company had tried to reproduce, or at least some building, manufacture robots, probably like him, but in smaller scales. And he had to give them some sort of the basic program for them to get sentient feelings. And for that, he had actually built, with their help, Build some, some of the world's Earth's first built transformers, but they weren't considered to be either Decepticons or Autobots. They just called themselves Earthbots. Even after they have been together for about four years, Shockwave had been asked by some of his new friends if he probably would end up getting married with Akitsu. But he said, I mean, I'm not sure if that's possible. I mean, despite, I mean, we are two different life forms. I'm a mechanical, she's living. But despite, after that, there were actually a priest willing to put a ceremony. And he did. Akitsu and Shockway were actually very happy to be married with each other. Even there were some some discussions discussions how their marriage would even work out, but they actually managed to get it worked out. Even after they've been together for about married for about five years, Akitsu and Chocolate wanted to have a family of their own, but since they could not have family together in one way or another. So they decided to adopt some children. They adopted a brother and a sister, who was about twins actually. And they were about 10 years old. The daughter's name was Asuna, Asuna and the boy Hideo. Hideo and Asuna were very scared for their new for their father for their father, but after that, he has shown them so much kindness and much protection. They actually slowly opened up and started to love him. They were actually very proud to have a robot, or an alien robot as a father, and an Ak Akitsu as a mother. And even after all of this, Shockwave. Even despite, he was never probably going never to see his home planet again. For that, he had made Earth his new home, even to have on his own family. He knew if that the other Decepticons would have found out, or at least seen him married with a, an alien, but in a Sekere, but named Akitsu, and having two human children, they would laugh at him, at him. and Megatron, he would have destroyed. Shockwave as a traitor, and probably even killed Shockwave's family. But luckily, no other Decepticons ever came to this Earth ever again. And Shockwave, he was okay with that. 
And that's how Shockwave and Akitsu from the True Love got a family together. The end.